hello everyone and welcome back to flo's corner so in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make an oven baked cheesecake so please stay tuned so first we want to get started on our crust the spring form pan is normally the set pan to make a great cheesecake it makes for an easy removal and keeps your cheesecake intact so to start on our crust i like to melt one stick of butter this equals eight tablespoons or a half a cup you can use any type of cookies i chose to use cinnamon graham crackers i used one sleeve of graham crackers now this step is truly optional you don't have to use a blender or a food processor you can put it in a ziploc bag and just bang the bag until they are crumbs but i was just being lazy because i was doing this after work so i just wanted to put it in my blender and just let it grind it up on its own it should look finely grained there should be no chunks of cookies at all Cheesecakes taste awesome with crust down at the bottom or the sides, but honestly, you don't have to make cheesecake with a crust. I have had cheesecake from certain restaurants that don't contain one, so it is okay. So next, I'm just going to pour that at the bottom of my springform pan. It is optional if you would like to use a piece of parchment paper underneath your crust. That is totally up to you. I have baked it both ways, but I honestly like it without. For this particular cheesecake, I decided to only have the crust at the bottom. I didn't make it with the crust on the side. If you would like to see a video like that, then please like this video and let me know in the comments down below. Now I'm going to pour my melted butter onto the crust. Here I'm just going to pour half at a time just so I can get them coated and spread around and then I'm going to pour the rest. Some people may only use just a little bit of tablespoons of butter, but I love a really buttery crust when it comes to my cheesecake. And now I'm just going to mix it all in with each other. You can see that the crust turns a darker brown when the butter is mixed in. Just keep mixing all the way around until you notice that all of the crust is incorporated with this butter. Now once the crust is ready, now I'm just going to kind of smash it down to the bottom of my pan. I'm also going to use my measuring cup to press down to get all of the crust around the pan. You can use a glass or you can even use your hand if you like. This process is fairly simple. It pretty much takes less than a minute to do this. You can put the crust in the oven and just bake for a little bit, but I like to have this in the refrigerator until after I finish making my filling. Both still taste great. Now onto our cheesecake filling. Because I am using my 9 inch springform pan, I am going to be using 4 blocks of cream cheese just so that I can give my cheesecake some height. Then I'm going to pour in 1 cup of sugar. Then followed by a half a cup of sour cream. And then I am going to give that a good mix for at least about 1 minute. This is just to get the cream cheese to be very creamy. And also an FYI, make sure that all of your ingredients for your cheesecake filling is at room temperature. When you incorporate cold ingredients, it makes the cheesecake very grainy and you don't want that. You can also use a hand mixer instead of a stand mixer if you like. Now we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt followed by one tablespoon of cornstarch or you can use one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. Now I'm going to start adding in my eggs. It's going to be three large eggs and you want to make sure that you add them one at a time. And you only mix them one at a time until it dissolves before putting in the next one. This is very crucial in making cheesecake. This is so that the eggs do not incorporate air which may risk your cheesecake to deflate in the oven or crack after it comes out. Also mix it on a low speed. This is the stir speed on the stand mixer. Any speed higher than that will cause your cheesecake to be over mixed. Once the last egg is incorporated, stop the mixer, whether you're using a hand mixer or a paddle attachment on your stand mixer. Now you're gonna add one tablespoon of lemon juice. This acts as a thickener for your cheesecake and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. I like to use heavy whipping cream. This is a half a cup because it gives me such a really smooth texture for my cheesecake. This is optional. Some people do not use heavy cream in their cheesecake, but I like it to, for the texture. To add these ingredients in, you're going to use the folding method, kind of like using when you're doing macarons. So you're pretty much going to swirl around the bowl and then get back to the center and press. Swirl around the bowl, press in the center. And also what I like to do is go underneath to make sure that there are no ingredients down under. 
Because I use my heavy cream, it does help instead of making my batter runny into more of a thicker consistency, which I love. And if you just see those little dots in my cheesecake, don't worry, that bakes right out once it's in the oven. You will not have a grainy cheesecake. Now just prepping for baking, all I'm going to do is wrap my springform pan around in aluminum foil. I'm going to give it a two layer of aluminum foil. I didn't buy the long heavy duty one, which normally would probably only need one layer. But this is just so when you are cooking your cheesecake, you're going to have to put it in a hot water bath, which is definitely going to help keep the cheesecake from cracking on the top. Also like that it doesn't brown my cheesecake on the top as well. All around the hot water bath is just very crucial when you are making an oven baked cheesecake. I've had made cheesecakes in the past without ever knowing about the hot water bath and it was just a different texture of type of, of my cheesecake when I was making it and it was browning terribly on the top. I used to think it was my oven. But knowledge is power and I studied other ways to make cheesecake and I'm so glad I ran across the hot water bath. It was definitely a lifesaver for me. So now we are ready to start filling our cheesecake filling on top of our crust. So here I'm just going to pour it into the springform pan. Doesn't matter how you do it, just as long as you get it in there. I have seen many other ways that grease the pan around the side, kind of like how you're making a cake, but I honestly don't think I need that. I've, I've never tried it to be honest with you, but I don't feel that the cake on this, I mean, the cheesecake on the side messes up at all without it. I also have seen other methods of using parchment paper around the whole tin and I've used it once before and it just made my cheesecake crinkly around the sides and I didn't care for it. But you're more than welcome to play around with different methods if you like. Here I'm just shaking around the cheesecake and popping some of the bubbles by slamming it on the table. This helps to give it a flatter top as well. Now for the hot water bath you're going to need to place this into a bigger pan outside of the springform pan. Now here I have some hot water in a pot. I didn't let the water come to a boil. I just made it where it was just hot enough. And now I'm just gonna put maybe about an inch of water underneath my tin. The purpose of the aluminum foil is to prevent the water from seeping inside of the cheesecake if you wish just to have your spring form there. Always bake your cheesecake on a low setting. Mine is on 300. All ovens are different and bake at different temperatures. So some may take 50 minutes and some may take an hour and 10 minutes. My oven in particular took one full hour for the cheesecake to be done. Your cheesecake should be semi done around the edges but jiggly in the middle and that's how you know it is done. I like to turn off my oven and let the cheesecake sit in there for 10 minutes. Then after the 10 minutes, I like to prop open my oven and let it cool for about an hour. Here is what it looked like after it has cooled in the oven for an hour. Now I'm going to leave it at room temperature for one hour. Then I place a plate on top of my pan and let it cool in the refrigerator overnight. You can wrap it with saran wrap instead, but I don't because I have used that one time and it took the top part off my cheesecake and that was not pretty and I didn't like it. Here is the next day and this is what the cheesecake looks like right out of the fridge. So what I like to do is take my little palette knife and place it in some hot water and I like to go around the tin just trying to get the cheesecake from sticking on the sides. Normally you don't always have to do this but I do feel a little bit more comfortable by doing this step. Now you can release the little latch on this side and what I like to do is take my springform pan and put it on top of something like a little can or jar so that when you remove the springform pan in a downward motion you can see that it comes all the way off instead of lifting above. Now this is what I like to use to get the bottom part of the springform pan off of the bottom of the cheesecake is to add some parchment paper on the top of the cheesecake, take a plate and you're going to turn it upside down so that the springform pan part is actually on top. And all you need to do is just go around with a knife or paddle knife or palette knife or however and just go around the seam so that you can get it loosened enough so that you can lift it off. So this part is totally my fault. I was looking at the side of me to my son and while I was actually going around the crust and it had cracked because I pushed a little bit too far. But this was just a demonstration video and it still tasted great. And now all I do is just turn it back around and then remove the parchment paper and then now I can cut my cheesecake. 
Now, before I cut, I like to use a ruler. I know this may not be conventional for a lot of people, but this is a very clean ruler that I like to use to guide me when I'm getting ready to cut straight down in a line. When I don't have the ruler, I tend to cut all crooked and crazy and I just don't like it. So I at least like to get the lines there first so that I know what I'm doing. You're more than welcome to cut your cheesecake into 12 slices. I just prefer to cut them in eight for this video. I did the same with this knife like I did with my palette knife. I placed it into some hot water, wiped it off with a napkin and started to cut. And once I noticed that the cheesecake, the cheesecake started getting full on my knife all i did was put it back in the hot water and wiped it off again with the napkin and continued to cut this is what gave me clean cuts don't ever fret that you're not a professional cutter honestly i'm not either i just found certain ways that make it look like i know what i'm doing and sometimes i kind of don't i'm just improvising but you know i've just been doing this for quite some time and i just learned different methods that work for me now here is what the cheesecake look like. You can add any type of topping, whether cream, nuts, fruit, or cookies. Now here I'm gonna be using my medium palette knife to lift up a piece so you can see how creamy and smooth the texture is. You can see how dense it is and how smooth the texture really came out. Tell me that that doesn't look like a slice of heaven. So this step is really optional. You don't always have to add a topping if you don't like, but here I just decided to add some mangoes and some cherries. So here I just have some fresh mango slices that I cut up and I'm gonna place some of these on top of the cheesecake, actually on one slice of the cheesecake. You can blend this up and make it into a jelly if you wanted to, or you can make it into a compote. So mine was very basic. All I did was just add the cube slices right on top. And this mango in particular was not ripe, so it gave it the right amount of acidity and tartness that the cheesecake needed. And for this slice, all I am using is just some cherry filling to coat the top of the cheesecake slice. You can use this normally to coat the whole entire pie of cheesecake, but I just wanted one slice. You can use any fruit or topping that you like. Just so many things can complement cheesecake in such a very good way. And as you can see, I am missing a slice up there because it didn't even make the plate. That's how good it was. But I really hope this video was encouraging. I will admit that in my baking journey, I did stray away from trying to make cheesecake. I didn't feel that it was good enough to serve to customers or however i just felt that the cheesecake i made was just good for my family but being on my journey and learning new methods and new ways has taught me a lot and i have gained a whole lot of confidence and i really hope that this video does the same well that is all for the video i'm going to enjoy a slice right now i hope this video was helpful and i hope to see you in my next one bye